Image display is just one of the advanced features of IPython, an interactive Python shell. Using IPython.display, the image module is imported. Next, a diagram 1PNG image is displayed using the imported image module. Python code and this image are probably stored in the same directory. A Python shell image is displayed using this code which combines the image and IPython display modules. Matplotlib.pyplot, pandas, numpy, and yfinance make up this code. Python provides functions and data structures for manipulating, analyzing, and visualizing data. A pandas and numpy module can be referred to easily by using the p and np aliases, respectively. It's used to access the matplyplot module that provides tools for creating data visualizations. This alias is used by the Y Finance module, which allows users to access financial data on Yahoo, a financial API. There is nothing else that the code does after importing these modules. In this case, it simply makes these functions and data structures available to the Python session for use. It is possible to manipulate and analyze data using these modules by calling specific functions or using specific data structures such as creating data frames using pandas or plotting data using matplotlib.pyplot. Yahoo's financial data can be retrieved using the YFinance module, analysis of finance using the other modules. The first thing this Python code does is define two variables, stock A equals TSLA and stock B equals JPM. The following symbols represent the stock ticker symbols for Tesla and JP Morgan Chase, respectively. Next, stock data for these two tickers is downloaded using the YFinance library. Using the parameter specified suggests downloading the data for the year-to-date YT period with a daily interval. Known as raw data, this data is stored in a variable. Next, we drop useless columns from the raw data, specifically close, high, low, open, and volume. The only column left is the adj close column, which displays the adjusted closing prices of each stock on any given day. In the next line, we create a new data frame in Pandas. All that will be contained in this data frame is the updated close data for the two tickers. Data data frames are used in the following two lines of code to store adjusted close data. As soon as the raw data data frame is loaded, TSLA is added as a column to the data data frame as the AJ close data for the stock A ticker. Similarly, the second line does the same thing for the ticker stock B. The code downloads adjusted close data for Tesla and JP Morgan Chase for the year-to-date period into a data frame for analysis. A figure with a specific size of 12 by 5 inches is created with this code using the matplotlib library. Stock A and stock B are set up in the figure as separate axes. Stock data is plotted on their respective axes in a specified color and grid pattern. As a next step, the code stores the legend handles H1 and H2 for each stock and labels L1 and L2 for each stock. Later, the plot's legend will be created based on these. Plot legend is then used to add a legend to each plot using the previously stored handles and labels. Locate the plot's legend in the upper left corner with the lock2 parameter. Using pilt.show, the code provides a title for the plot. It creates a plot with two stock prices and adds a legend and title so that the data is better visualized. This code creates a new table that contains the normalized data that is calculated for two specific stocks, stock A plus score norm, stock B plus norm. Norm data is an empty data frame created with two columns, stock A and stock B. Following are two lines that calculate the percentage change for each stock and apply the cumsum function. Accordingly, each value in the data frame represents the total percentage change since the first value. A percent change is calculated from the next row of the data frame since the first row contains NAN values. As a final step, the last line renames the columns of the data frame to indicate that they contain normalized data. Using this code, two different stocks can be compared by normalizing their data and representing their percentage change relative to their initial values. To begin with, the code sets the figure dimensions to 12 inches by 5 inches. Two lines follow, labeled stock A and stock B, plotting the data for those stocks, with a grid overlaid on the graph. In the next two lines, we obtain the legend handles and labels for the first plot, which are derived from the variables H1 and L1. Using the handles and labels, the code creates a legend and places it in the upper right corner lock equals 2. The final two lines display the graph's title and figure. Here is a code that plots two different stocks, adds a legend to them, 
and includes a title and grid overlay for clarity with the matplotlib library. A scatter plot is plotted using the values from two variables, stock and stock B, in this Python code. In the first line, the values of stock B are plotted on the y-axis and the values of stock A are plotted on the x-axis with the plt.scatter function. X and Y axes are labeled by the second and third lines, respectively. The scatter plot is displayed on the screen with plt.show, visualizing the relationship between two variables and determining if there is a pattern or correlation is useful when using this code. Importing the image module gives this code access to opening, manipulating, and saving images. A file named diagram2.png is then opened using the image function of Python. This file is located in the same directory as the Python code. Using this method, a variable diagram with the image is created. In the output, the diagram2.png image is displayed. Importing stats models is all that this function does. Module attributes and functions can be accessed more quickly and easily with this alias. An alias for statsmodels.api is sm. By using this code, we gain access to all the functions and attributes in the stats models module. In a code, this can be helpful when using multiple modules as it saves us from writing out the full module name every time. It is possible to type sm.function instead of typing out statsmodels.api.function. Coding this way reduces code complexity and makes it easier to read. StatsModels is a Python module for statistical analysis. Data analysis and modeling functions, models, and tests are included. The SM package allows us to access all its capabilities and use them in our code by importing it. Using the statistics models library, this Python code runs a simple linear regression. It is done in the following steps. One, with the first line, a constant term intercept is added to stock A's data, improving the accuracy of the analysis. It is stored in the variable X. Assume the following. Y is a variable used to store the data for stock B. The third, this third line creates the linear regression model object using the ordinary least squares OLS method. Four, in the fourth line, the newly created model object is used to fit the data. The fifth paragraph, this line retrieves the intercept alpha and slope beta coefficients from the fitted model and stores them in variables. Assign five. As a result of the sixth line, the intercept and slope value are printed. The seventh point. Statistical information such as the R-squared value, standard error, and p-values of the coefficients is displayed in the last line. Briefly, this code performs a linear regression analysis on two stock prices and prints the fitted coefficients and summary. This Python code calculates the residuals of two stock variables, stock A and stock B, using their beta and alpha coefficients. In the first step, the beta coefficient and normalized data of stock A are subtracted from the normalized data of stock B. To get the residuals, it subtracts the alpha value from the result. A new column is then created in the norm data table called residuals to hold these residuals. The mean value of the residuals column is calculated and stored in the norm data data frame. Usually, this code is used in linear regression to find the difference between the actual and predicted values. The residuals are used to check the accuracy of a regression model and to make any corrections that are necessary. Python code is used to create a data visualization using PyPlot. It plots a line graph with the x-axis representing time based on the mean of residuals from a data set, residuals. Square bracket notation is used to access residuals data from norm data. In order to plot this data on a graph, the function plot is used with the optional argument fig size. This graph shows residuals between JPM and TSLA on the y-axis. Using the function hlines, a dashed horizontal line is plotted across the graph, where the y-value represents the residual mean. For this case, the end and start of the line can be determined by using the optional arguments xmin and xmax. A dashed line style is set on the red line. Lastly, the graph is displayed using the show function. A visual representation of the residuals of two companies, JPM and TSLA, over time is displayed in this code. Stats models provides a function addFuller, which is imported from the tsa.statools module. On the residuals of a dataset called norm data, the augmented Dickey-Fuller test ADF is performed using this function. Time series data is commonly tested for stationary behavior using the ADF test. With the residuals argument in the addFuller function, we specify which data should be tested, in this case, the residuals of norm data. 
In this case, max lag specifies the maximum number of lags to include in the test. As well as the ADF statistic, the function returns a tuple that consists of the p-value and the tuples of other values. In the ADF test, the null hypothesis implies that there is a unit root in the data, which indicates that the data is not stationary, as opposed to the alternative hypothesis, which implies that the data is stationary. ADF statistics are compared with critical values to test whether the null hypothesis can be rejected. An analysis of p-values is also used to determine the significance of a result. A p-value below a certain threshold, usually 0.05, indicates that the null hypothesis can be rejected and the data is stationary. This code performs the ADF test on residuals of a dataset and obtains information about stationarity using the aidfuller function. Using this code, we can visualize the difference between two normalized stock datasets, stock A and stock B. As soon as the first line is executed, the norm data data frame contains a column called difference, which is calculated by subtracting stock B from stock A. For plotting the data, this column will be used. Plotting the difference column with a 10 by 6 inch figure size is illustrated in line 2 using the plot function. To add a title to the graph, the next three lines use a single title function and a horizontal line function at y coordinates 0 and 0. In order to visually see when the difference between two stocks is positive or negative, these lines are used as reference points. In the final line, the graph is displayed using the show function. In addition to showing the trend of the difference between the two stocks over time, the graph will also show any modifications in trend. Using the image function in Python, this code displays the image diagram 3.png. By passing in the image name as a parameter, this function displays the image. Since no other instructions or actions are given in the code, the image is simply displayed. Visualizations could be shown as part of a larger code or code. The index column identifies the column. DataFrame norm data's index column is reset using the reset index method in the code above. By specifying in place it's true, changes will be made directly to the data frame instead of creating a duplicate. A sequential numerical index is created starting from zero by using this method. This code essentially replaces any existing index values with a new index value set in the first column of the data frame. In this case, a sequential index would be more useful if the original index values were not meaningful or useful. The code below defines a function called print position that takes a dictionary variable named position as its argument. A readable format is then generated by string concatenation and type conversion to display the various values from the position dictionary. A list of information is provided, including short stock, borrowed and sold value, current buy price, long stock, bought value, current sell price, total profit, realized profit, and total money spent. Using this, we can track the performance of one or more stock positions with relevant data displayed in an organized way. A new dataset called Trading Sim is created in this Python code, which stores the results of a trading simulation. The data frame contains various columns, such as date to record the date of each trading day, buy or sell to indicate whether a stock was bought or sold, signal to store the trading signal generated by the simulation, signal strength to measure the strength of the signal, decision to record the decision made based on the signal, short stock to indicate if a stock was shorted, borrowed and sold to record the amount of stock borrowed and sold, current buy price to store the current buy price of the stock, long stock to track the amount of stock bought, bought to record the total cost of buying stock, current sell price to store the current sell price of the stock, total profit to calculate the total profit made, realized profit to track the profit that has been realized, and total money spent to record the total amount of money spent during the simulation. Following that, a norm data data frame is used to fill in the date and signal columns in a trading sim data frame. Stock market data, such as signals and dates generated by algorithms, are included in norm data. It stores the results of a simulated trading scenario, for example, buying and selling stocks using signals generated by an algorithm. Based on the price movements, this Python code simulates trading stocks. For storing information and making decisions, it first initializes various variables and dictionaries. Starting with the first value, the code goes through each data point, 
checking for an existing position. When this occurs, each stock in the position's value and profit are updated. As soon as the trading term reaches its end, the position closes and the profit is updated. After that, it checks if the current price is within a close range, which indicates that no significant changes have occurred. As soon as it detects that it is close to home, it calculates the signal strength based on the number of days in close range. Whenever a position exceeds a certain signal threshold, it closes that position. A new position may be opened or maintained if none are available. Price that is outside the close range is checked for direction, and the number of days that have increased or decreased is updated accordingly. The decision is also updated as a result of calculating the signal strength. In the absence of an existing position and with a strong signal strength, it opens a new position by shorting one stock and buying another. Purchase price plus borrower's fee of 5% equals total money spent. As the code loops through each data point, it updates the simulation data frame with information regarding signal strength, decision-making, profit, and total investment. Using this algorithm, one attempts to make money by capitalizing on stock price movements that move in the same direction for a certain period of time. This code converts the trading sim data frame to a CSV file, trading simulation.csv, using the to CSV function. CSV files will not include data frame index values if index equals false is specified. The first few rows of the converted CSV file are displayed to the user using the head function. It is useful for checking the conversion was successful and for quickly checking the data before performing further analysis. The profit percentage is calculated and printed using the dictionary position as input. First, it divides the value stored under the key total profit by the value stored under total money spent. Using the round function, the result is multiplied by 100 and rounded to two decimal places. In order to concatenate the calculated value with profit, the plus operator is used. The result is then printed to the console. Based on the dictionary values stored, this code calculates and displays the percentage profit made from the money spent.